Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com and welcome back to our build series of a 2018 Honda Grom. Now today we're going to be focused in on replacing what they call the rear set and it's comprised of the foot pegs as well as your brake and your shifting control. So it's a complete kit from Driven. There is only one additional part that you're going to need to order because this actually eliminates that pull switch that activates your brake light. You're going to need to get a hydraulic type switch. Now, believe it or not, we're actually building this thing up and we're going to give it away. So if you're interested in entering to win the sweepstakes, check the link in the description below and it's going to carry you to a landing page where you can enter. Now, as far as the special tools go, well, there aren't any, but there's one thing that you're going to need to pick up and that is some blue Loctite because we're talking about control points here. So it all needs to stay together. Very important. Well, now that we've got our special tool and our parts together, let's get over to the machine and get this thing done. The game plan here, we're gonna start over on the left side. First, we need to get the shift mechanism removed from the actual input shaft for the shifting. Then we are going to put the jack under it and just lift the weight off of it because what's gonna happen when we remove these two bolts, the bottom one, no big deal. This top one, it actually goes through the swing arm all the way to the other side and through the engine. So we need to support all this so it doesn't collapse. So let's go ahead, reach in and get that, uh, that shifter off. Just a 10 millimeter, we'll leave it in place and then it should come away and come off the shaft when we remove this outer plate. This is a 12 millimeter a 14 on this side that'll actually stay in place and the other side has a 19. Next let's put some support under it. You don't have to lift it just support the weight. Now to keep things well loosely together we're just going to use a steel rod this is roughly a half inch. We're going to use that to push through and more or less hold the bike together. So we're starting to push through. Let's go ahead and pull it off the shift. There we go. Piece of cake. There's a little bit more going on on this side, obviously. But let's start by getting the exhaust bracket out of the way. Of course, we will be replacing the exhaust so I'm not so worried about the lack of a mount for it on this particular setup. Just another 12 down low. Drive that in a little bit further. Now with those two out of the way, now we can at least bring it out and lift it up. That way we can access our linkages and get all this unplugged. Just a whole lot easier than trying to work on it with it still attached to the machine. Let's start by getting this cotter pin out of the way. That pin won't push through unless I get the body unbolted. So we can get that pin to spin around and clear. Don't give you much clearance there but it will come out. Next we just need to follow our brake light wires up to a clamp. Let's see if we can get that to pull loose. There we go. Everything's pulled apart but before we can start putting it together we need to make a decision as to where we want our foot pegs to be because as you can see they had multiple locations I'm going to pull it back to the five location on both sides so let's get one of our pegs we're going to go ahead and put some blue Loctite on the threads once I get it positioned then we're going to torque it to 29 foot pounds let's take a peek and see if we've got it level I'm using the Driven TT Racing as my level point. That's it. Let's do it again. Now the cool part with these, the reason they do this, well depending on how big your foot is and what angle you like to engage with the shifter and or brake, that's why they have all these adjustment points. Really nice setup that they came up with. Yep, that's it. So let's go ahead and remove this cotter pin and get this ready to attach 
to our new uh, shift arm. You could probably do this on the bike. I prefer just to remove the whole thing and work at it with it pointing toward me. Now we're going to set this up in the standard shift or regular shift configuration where it's attached at this point at the bottom. That's what we're after. If you wanted a reverse shift pattern, I don't know why you would, but you can actually move it over to up here and it'll actually shift in reverse of what you're used to, to each their own. I'm going to go with the standard on this. The one thing you need to make sure of is the distance here. If you're going to do standard, this needs to be 2.6 inches. If you're going to move it up to the reverse, it needs to be extended out to 2.8. So 2.6 inches is actually 66 millimeters, and that's from the center of the eyes. So let's check and see where it is. And hey, if we get it up there and it's just a little too high or too low, break these loose and adjust it where it feels right for you. So now on this side, the two spacers that we're going to use is out of the larger diameter is the thinner one and the thinner one for the smaller diameter. And they're actually going to go here and here. Let's go ahead and get our swing arm bolt and just let this guide it through. We have to jiggle it around to get the line back up. Now take one of the M8 bolts. We can get a little bit of blue Loctite on it. Don't forget your spacer. Go ahead and put our bolt back in on the shift shaft. Now, our bolt through the turnbuckle and the spacer. Now through the shaft and bolt on the other side with Loctite. <laughs> Very important. That's a little bit on the aggressive side as far as down. If you need to bring it in closer, break those loose and then bring it in. But I kind of like that angle. So I think I'm going to leave it in that position. So we've got this side pretty much ready to go. Let's head over to the other side and start getting it put together. The first thing we want to do on this side is go ahead and get the master cylinder reattached to this point. Let's start by getting this clevis pin in. With the clevis pin in, go ahead and bring up your bracket. Don't forget to add in this bracket because it acts as a spacer as well as an attachment point for the exhaust system. Put our nut on. Just do it hand tight for right now. Go ahead and put our cotter pin through. Let's go ahead and get those two tightened down. Now let's bring it around with our spacers. A lot tight on the bottom one. Don't have to put it on the top because it has a locking type nut that goes on it. So now we need to torque this main bolt to 54 foot pounds. Now hopefully if I do this smooth enough that ratchet will stay on on the other side. There we go. A little Loctite on the bolt for the exhaust. I'm just going to reuse the factory bolt. Now keep in mind we're going to be replacing this later, but if we were doing the final install, you would need to put Loctite on it. So this actually completes the installation of the kit itself, but I still want the rear brake light to work. So we're going to add in this switch and all it'll do is just replace this banjo bolt. It's just a 12 millimeter. And once you break this loose, air gets in and you have to bleed it. Otherwise they are not going to function properly. And no, you can't just pull it apart and put it back together. It doesn't work that way. Once you open up a system like this, you got to straighten it out. That should do it. Now, before we can actually bleed the system, we have to gain access to the rear brake master cylinder reservoir. And to do it, it's a little bit invasive. You actually have to unbolt the rear tail section, swing it up out of the way. And there are several bolts and a couple of different plastic rivets that you have to remove to get the front shroud off. Now, with all these panels off, we can actually bleed it. But before we can even do that, we have to move the reservoir temporarily to right here. Now you can access both of those screws to get the uh, reservoir cap off. What we're doing now is just uh, bleeding the brakes, pumping it up, I'm opening up the valve, and then pushing it through. And shortly, it should push that air all the way through the hose 
and then out through this bleeding valve. Don't let it fall below, otherwise you're just gonna induce air up here and you pretty much have to start all over again. So yeah, there's no way to do this without accessing this. It's just too much it has to be forced through to get the air through. So the pumps set our level. That's actually right at it. So I think we're done. Now we can go ahead and get our cap back on. Move that bolt. And since we're right here with that connection for the switch, let's go ahead and make it. Here's our connection point. That will be tough to do without removing all this. Brown to black, green to green. Now, let's get our reservoir back in place. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. Only thing I have to do now is just reinstall all these panels. But listen, if you'd like to purchase the parts that we use to do this, why don't you check the link in the description below. It'll carry you to a shopping cart where it's already set up and ready to go. And hey, if the contest is still active, there will also be a link there that will carry you to a landing page where you can enter to win. Listen, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at partzilla.com. And if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, we just want to say thank you and have a great day.